Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to part two of Bronco Models 135th Horse Glider build. So in part two, we're going to be taking a look at painting and weathering the interior of the aircraft. So as always, I like to prime my models first. So I'm going to use Faleo Serps Primer Grey. I have my PSI relatively um, turned high. I think I'm spraying at about 30, 35 PSI. I always find that the Faleo primers tend to behave their best at high pressure. And for priming, I'm using a 0.4 needle on my Harder and Steenbeck. You might notice my, the cup of my airbrush is bubbling, that's just because the uh, seal on my uh, nozzle was a little loose, but uh, I sort that later on. So the trick for spraying model colour paints is it's, it's not actually that difficult and they do spray pretty well once you tint them correctly. And the trick is using Flejo Airbrush Flow Improver and basically um, tinning it about 30-60 or at the very most 4060 with paint as dominant and this stuff will spray absolutely wonderfully. Uh, the only reason why it's not behaving too well is that there's a lot of moisture in the air, it being the Irish winter, so it's very wet and damp and uh, I need to invest in a, a secondary moisture trap for my airbrush as it's just um, diluting the paint far, far too much in the air. So now I'm going to start adding highlights to our interior green by mixing a little bit of ghost grey from Filejo Game Colour. And again I just tin it with some airbrush flow improver. I've also switched my needle down to a 0.2mm needle for my um, airbrush just to give me better control. And I just want to put some of this lighter colour in the centre of panels just to break it up. I know these aircraft wouldn't be, would not have been too heavily weathered, however if I felt if I didn't weather them up they would look a little bit too much like a toy so I'm just going to add some light um, surface weathering.
and we move on to the lattice work of the fuselage. I'm just going to start spraying it into the center columns and the center panels, should I say, and leaving the the darker color in the recesses. And it just adds a very nice visual interest to the uh, to the lattice work. Again, a lot of this is going to be hidden once the fuselage is together, but for the areas of the fuselage that are visible through the large hatches and the fact that I'm going to leave the tail section off it should add a lot of visual interest. So with a model this size you can see it's quite tedious to uh, highlight everything and it's going to be equally as tedious to weather everything as well. However if you just stay patient you will get a very nice result as this model does have a lot of very nice detail. For the interior of the cockpit uh, I just used flat black for the control columns and for the instrument panels and just used some very basic dry brushing techniques just to add the detail to the dials. On hindsight, I really should have left all this separate so I could actually have painted the various detail more accurately. However, once the, the canopy, though it is very large, is attached, I wonder just how much this will be seen. So I just very much did a, a very basic cockpit for uh, this aircraft. And with everything allowed to dry, we're going to start adding our weathering. And for this, we're going to use AK panel liner. In this case, it's their panel liner black. You can easily use um, oil paint for this or the Tamiya panel liners. Now, I have not matte coated or gloss coated my model, as this is an enamel. Uh, it tends to work a little bit better, I hear, with a matte coat. So I'm just going to apply this directly out of the bottle. Uh, it goes down very thick. And very soon I'm going to start adding a little bit of white spirit just to uh, tin this down somewhat. And I'm just going to apply it with an old brush. And I'm going to do the fuselage in sections. So I'm going to start talking you through it now in a moment. So once the wash has been allowed to sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, I'm just going to take a Q-tip or a cotton swab and to start removing the excess. I just want the wash to stay in the, the recessed areas, as I don't want this to be too dirty, even though it is highly likely I'm overweathering this model as it is, as you know, gliders often were just one-shot weapons. You know, Once they were used, they were almost too damaged to use again. But just to add a little bit of, of interest and make these, these details pop. To, to remove more material often I'll just use a, a clean piece of kitchen roll or paper towel and just wipe away. Bearing in mind, in my case, I haven't sealed my model, so I had to do this very gently or I'll start or I'll start removing paint, so I have to be very careful here. But if you're gentle, you should be fine, or if you just want to be safe rather than sorry, just mac coat your model before you start using enamels. And if you're using oils instead, just gloss coat. Again, just removing the excess here. And it does give us a very nice grimy effect. So 
So I thinned some of the panel uh, liner with some Artist White Spirit and I'm just going to start doing some pin washes around some of these raised details here. It is a bit stark and a bit pronounced but once it's dried for a few minutes we're going to come in again with a Q-tip and wipe away the excess and it should leave us some very nice uh, effect here. So then taking a clean Q-tip and just wiping away some of the excess, the wash is just sat on for about 10 or 15 minutes, just enough that it's evaporated most of the enamel away. And then if it doesn't want to move, just uh, somewhat moisten your Q-tip in white spirit and you'll be able to lift away any ex excess you don't want. It does take a lot of time. Again, like I was saying, this model is quite tedious to work on as it's so big but the effects are very nice once you kind of stick with it. So I added a scratch built hinge for the main door. It's just a piece of scrap photo etch and a small strip styrene. For some reason Bronco didn't include any hatch or any, any hinge detail in the kit. So you're going to have to fabricate one yourself or buy the Eddard photo etch upgrade that does have a hinge included. As you can see here I'm being quite messy here with the hatch just laying it down pretty thick and heavy. As I want this to be a little bit more worn than the rest of it as a lot of cargo and what have you would pass through this. And then it's going to remove the excess. And judging by on how hard you uh, remove this, you can get different effects. Now you can take more material or less material and uh, kind of mess about with values with how much of the wash you remove. So that's what I'm doing here. So in some areas, I take a lot of the enamel wash away and in others, not so much. And it does give us some very interesting weathering qualities here. But again, be somewhat careful not to remove any paint here. And we're moving on now to probably the area that drove me near to insanity, which was adding pin washes to all these slats. Now I'm just going to do it on this single panel here, as you see here, or the device will be here all day. This took a very long time, because as you can imagine, there is a lot of slat detail. And the best way I found to do this was water down, or should I say, tin down some of your panel liner with some spirits, moisten your area with a little bit of spirits just to help it flow, and then just basically trace along the edges. It's pretty messy. But once it's dry to the touch, we're going to take our Q-tip and we're going to wipe away uh, any of the excess we don't want. It takes a very long time, but the effect is pretty nice.
Moving on to the seats for the co-pilot and pilot, I'm just going to paint these with Flejo flat black. And then for the straps, I'm just going to use uh, Flejo German camo beige. You can use any type of khaki or kind of canvas color you, you want for this. I just kept it pretty simple. Um, I didn't go too crazy weathering up or highlighting up either the leather seats or the straps as uh, a lot of it's not going to be really seen. So I just applied a wash and left it with that. So I wanted to add some exposed wood uh, coming through the paint job, so I'm just going to use some Panzer Aces new wood and just apply it using just the standard shipping method with a sponge. I'm just going to focus on some of the hatches here and some of the leading edges, just areas where I think a little bit of wear and tear might have rubbed away the paint and exposed some of the, um, the laminate wood that would have been this aircraft is made out of. Again this is optional but just how it would break up the green a little bit. And then just to add a little bit more tone to it, I'm just going to use some German orange ochre. And just use the same method and stipple it into the same areas, just to give it a bit more of a, a wooden feel. And again, I'm being very careful. I don't want to go too overboard with, with this effect. I'm just adding the seats and harnesses for the pilots. As I look for something for some reason. <laughs> So these almost can friction fit in, but I'm just going to secure them with a small amount of extra tin just to lock them in place. So we're going to start moving on to the part that I was dreading the most and that's actually adding the panels to the fuselage and I had good reason to dread this because this turned out to be an absolute dog 
with some terrible, terrible fits. I don't know if, if that was just me or this model, but this kit has been an absolute bitch to put together. And we're going to see some pretty dodgy um, seams and gaps I'm going to have to fill uh, in between now and the next video. I, I kind of left out a lot of this because this was an absolute just train wreck to put together this part. You'll see what I mean in a few moments. So just trying to fit things together that they aligned up with the bulkheads was tricky enough. Like I was saying, Bronco just has you basically praying that parts align. They don't really help you in any way here. So I had to use extra tin, super glue and contacta in different places just to get this bloody thing together. And as you're going to see, it's still not up to the job. I'm going to do some major, major filling and to find a very quiet and dark corner to have a good cry and maybe a beer. Actually, I think a beer might do the job and I'll be okay for part three. But just trying to get these panels to align and sit flush was very difficult. And there are some very, very dodgy, dodgy seams like the seam line here. It's horrific, and then there's a massive gap here. I honestly don't know what the hell's going on with this kit. But anyway, that's been part two of this build. Do join me for part three, where I'll have all those seams and gaps filled, and we'll get down to the cool part, the actual painting of the fuselage itself.